What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Out of the Park Baseball 22, our Milwaukee Brewers franchise. We are doing, it has been a little while, as I told my cap labbers, and now I will tell my fellow Out of the Park Baseball fans. It's been a little while, but the series is far from over, and we are taking over here. This episode will cover the second half of the 2021 season. And to start it off, we have a few logistical moves to make with so if we actually look at our players we have 10 i believe 10 position players and 13 pitchers so what we're going to do is actually we're short and we can call up three more position players ideally one in the outfield potentially another infielder and a third kind of flex player probably billy mckinney if he's still in the minors uh which i think he is so let's check it out Um, to, Bryce isn't ready. I don't think he's ready to come up yet. We're not going to bring him up. Anyone it would be. Yeah, here's Billy McKinney. Is there another? There used to be a different screen that I could go to to see all of the. Uh, where was that? Mm, here it is. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, first first of all, we're going to call up Billy McKinney, get him up here, and Tyrone Taylor. They're at least up there in the real life league right now. Uh, did I see Jace Peterson? Jace Peterson to be fine. So that'll give us some more flexibility. We're going to reorder these depth charts a little bit, uh, especially with Colton Wong have it, uh, out for a few days, and Omar Nevaez. Yeah, that'll put, in a, uh, put us in a better position. At least have some more flexibility in the offense. But again, we're still in July right now. A, f a few more days before the trade deadline. I think there was one more move I wanted to make. I know we ended the last episode with a trade, and I think there's one more. I don't know why Kane's showing up. I don't think he's even on our team anymore. He's not on our team. I remember trading him. Um, Brett Anderson was one guy that I was going to look to try to flip. And I want to see what we can get for him. At least before the trade deadline. So if we can't land him, we'll probably just keep him in the pen anyway, since we're in a position to push for a playoff berth. But I don't know. I, I saw that he was around 33 or something, and it looks like we'll get offers. Nothing really captures the eye off the bat. Colin Moran's a two and a half star guy. He's 28. Got some power. Really, it's about it. 26 year old reliever. If anything, it'd be to free up some salary, but. Um, I say to keep the balance, we try to go for this reliever and add some sort of prospect potential because our, our farm system is not it right now. Moises would be a nice addition to our system. Um, we'd have to give up Edward Perez or Abner Uribe. Mario Feliciano, even. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't like any of these moves. So, probably not. So, I mean, I, I guess it's probably better doing nothing. Let's keep him in the pen. I think that will end the trade deadline uh, because I just wanted to go over some just go moves, I guess, bringing our team up. This is what our lineup's going to look like for the second half of the season, as well as our pitching staff. Feel free to pause and take a look. But Adrian Hauser's been really impressive. And, you know, actually, with him being this impressive, I'm going to shop him around one more time before we head into the simulation. So my plan is I'll come back in September depending or depending on what happens with the club and we'll have a better idea of how we will end the season. The potential playoff berth. But we'll see. So I already getting a lot more offers though for Adrian Hauser. And I think out of these offers 
I thought I saw a three and a half star guy up here. That. Yeah. Uh, Perez. Uh, I. I still would want some sort of prospect. Yeah, I mean, he's playing. He's playing so good, and we're trying to make that push. So we might as well keep him. I don't think there's any more moves to be made. So I will see you all in September in just a second. All right, everybody. We are not in September yet, but we do have three players that we need to decide where to go, and they're actually all pitchers. This is from the trades we made at the end of the last episode. Michael Kopik and Trevor Steven are the two main guys that I have my eye on. Trevor Steven could start in the pen right away. He's already been good this year. Three and a half star guy with good stuff. When I think about who would I replace him with, I'm thinking Seth Elledge hasn't been as good, so we might move him down for the time being. And bring up Trevor. And then as far as I, Daniel Lynch was really just an extra prospect we got. I'll probably just move him to AAA too. And he has to be on the 40 elite man roster. Okay. But I I don't think we really have any room for him now. Michael Kopik could potentially start. Uh, when I think of who he would replace though. And I look at how amazing our rotation has been. I don't see a place for him. If anything, he would be somewhere in the long reliever role. But then you'd start to replace either Eric Lauer or Brett Anderson. And again, not really any room for him. So we're going to move him down to triple A after we put him on the 40 man. There we go. So just an idea of where those guys are going to end up from that trade. Okay, welcome back. Our simulation will be disrupted just a little bit with Eric Yardley out for 13 to 14 months, so that's actually a pretty big hit. He's been pitching really well this year, so it's rather unfortunate, but that will land him on the 60-day DL, and it looks like we will go hunting again for pitching in the minor leagues. So, uh, right off the bat, I mean, Alec Bettinger, or we can now bring up Kopik to take over in the bullpen. There are a few pitchers as well that, that could come up, but I, I think Kopik's our best bet. And we're going to ask our bench coach for the, for, the, for the bullpen. So we should be fine. That's a, that's a pretty big blow. Adrian Hauser just got injured as well, so we're going to keep in mind what that ends up being, and I can probably just advance a few days. But our bullpen's taking some hits. Uh, with injuries, with Yardley out for 13 months. It's going to be a tough, tough September. And Hauser is now out for four months. So the second half of our season has backfired just a little bit. With Hauser and Yardley out, that's, it's going to be tough now. We're going to again have to go to the minors to look for a replacement. And we'll probably just bring up Alex since he can start um, and I'll actually see what our bench coach re recommends. It looks like Kopik's going to be in the starting lineup now. So, yeah, without Hauser, uh, it's going to be quite difficult. I mean, look at he's pitching out of his mind at 2.3 ERA, 7 and 2 at this point in the season. Didn't really, I didn't expect that at all. So, uh, it's rather disappointing to see where he ends up. But two more moves had to be made as we are sitting in the division lead by about a game and a half over the Cardinals. And the Cardinals, I knew their team was going to be pretty good at the beginning of the season. I mean, I, I think Goldschmidt, the, the duo between Goldschmidt and Arenado, along with Flaherty and Martinez, I think are, are two pretty solid pitchers. They got a scary team. So, yeah, I think it's going to come down to the wire. I want to see how many more times we play the Cardinals before the end of the season. It looks like we play them quite a few times, actually. Three different series. And I think we close out. Yeah, so... We got some important games coming up in September. Ten games above 500. It could go down in any way. These injuries, I think, will make a pretty big difference. But we'll see. We need the offense to pick it up. I've, I've been pretty disappointed with what uh, Vogelbach and Manny Pena have, have done. 
Yelich is sitting 308, Wong sitting 302. Jackie Bradley fulfilling Lorenzo Cain's role. He's hit 20 home runs this season, which is actually pretty impressive. But it, it should be interesting, so I will see you guys in September. All right, everybody, welcome back. We are finally in September, and I want to go over the player development update. Before we get started, we're seeing some nice improvements out of Bryce. Upgrades to a two-star with potential at three-star. Micker Adolfo goes up to a two-star. And that's about it, at least for the bigger names. Luis Castro goes up to two-star. So I think what I'm going to do for the month of September is probably sim simulate these games one by one so we can see what goes down and make moves accordingly. But our pitching staff has been so dominant this season uh, compared to our offense. So I think in the off season we need to make some major moves to acquire some more bats just because we don't have it. Um, especially with Braun leaving and Fielder. I just feel like Fielder was a while ago, but... Uh, without Braun, and I mean some of the other names, Gene Segura, I remember in the past, uh, the Brewers' offense hasn't really been there. So, something to keep an eye on. Uh, we start the month of September off with a 7-1 win. Brandon Woodruff goes to 13-10. and He's been really good this year, as expected. Him and Corbin Burns at the top of the rotation. Freddie Peralta, too, actually. How long has he been starting? He started about 15 games. Uh... Yeah, we moved him into the rotation. He's been really good. He's only 25, so it looks like we'll keep him around. I think the top half of our, of our, of our rotation is, is, is set for a while. Derek Fisher must be placed in the active roster or designated for assignment. He wasn't hitting all that great. I, I can't remember if the roster's... Yeah, now we have 28 spots, so we can just move him on up. Where did he go? Triple A. So we'll move him up. We have another spot. Uh, all of our pitching staff is drained. So if anything, I think we need more pitching. Uh, so let's call up Hobie to hopefully add to the pen at least for the final month. I don't know how all of these guys get drained so fast. This tends to happen. So hopefully that'll help. So we finished the San Francisco series. On to the Cardinals series. This is huge. We lose 7-2 in 13. We win the second game 7-2. That's Corbin Burns getting the win, which is big. Final game of the three-game series is a loss. So we get shut out by the Cardinals, and that puts us in a disappointing position. Brett Anderson now out for three weeks. Very unfortunate. More pitching. <laughs> we'll bring up Seth Elledge again. And I don't think Anderson was starting, so it's not a big deal. But final game of the Phillies series, trying to avoid the sweep. We do with a 3 0. Who pitched? Freddie Peralta. Looking very nice. So we head to Cleveland. We get compensation picks. Always a nice addition. Tyrone Taylor's hurt for about a week. So 11 games over 500. We're a half game up over the Cardinals. This is going to be too close to call. Where are we in the... Uh, let's actually just... Can I see the wild card? Oh, Cardinals have the first wild card spot. So, all right. This is going to, it's going to be interesting. Cleveland series. Not starting off strong. We finished strong, though. 11-0. Michael Kopik. Pitching surprisingly well. Three hits out of Keston Hira. Two hits out of Yelich and two hits out of Jackie Bradley. So, on to Detroit and then Chicago. Start off 4-1. Lose 4-5, split the series. We'll take it. Chicago at home. Win the first game 6-3, 3-2, and 12. And 11-2. Brady Peralta, 6-2. And now we play the Cardinals. So this is a four-game series. This is a pretty big deal. We're up one game. This could be our chance to secure the division. And we start off strong. Colton Wong will be hurt and out for two weeks. Let's put him on the 10-day DL. That's not good. 
I think we're going to give Bryce some action in the month of September. And he will actually be starting at second base with Ira going over to first base. Okay. Derek Fisher starting over Billy McKinney. I mean, they're both about even, so it's actually McKinney's hitting 283. It's fine. We're going to let that go. Manny Pena's hot. <laughs> He's hitting 200, so I don't know how hot he is, but three games left in the Cardinal series. We lose by one in game two, win by one in game three, and we're shut out in game four. So it keeps us one game up. And we play them again, actually, after this Mets series. So, Mets series is pretty big. Tied at one, and we lose the series. Okay. Brett Anderson can come off the, D come off the DL. He wasn't playing all that well, so I'm actually just going to have him sent on a rehab assignment. Three-game series. This could determine the division winner in 2021. Game number one, we win. 5-2, that's Brandon Woodruff going to 14-12. and 12. Game number two, we lose 6-4. Of course, it comes down to the end. Game number three, we win 5-2. Okay. That's good. We have a three-game series, I think, against the Dodgers to finish off. Colton Wong is off the DL. Let's make some room for him. Bryce is hitting 171. You know, I might move down... I might try to keep up Bryce just for the exposure and move down Jace. And we can't. Okay, let's just move down Bryce. Colton Wong will be back in the lineup for this final three-game series. Oh, we're up now three games, actually. So we have a very good chance of securing the division lead, then. Or the division as a, a one. I think one win does it. We lose 4-1. Cardinals win. We lose 6-2. Cardinals win. Okay. Getting a little too close for me. Final game of the season. And we lose. And the Cardinals lose as well. Alright, and the Brewers have made it to the playoffs in 2021. So let's simulate to the playoffs beginning. Barely clinched out the division there. But that is our first division title in this series. So a very nice start. We finished 86 and 76. Let's do a little bit of a recap. What actually happened this season to get us here? Led by Yelich and Wong, both hitting 295. I'm impressed. And Yelich is signed anyways for quite some time. So that's actually expected out of him. Um, Colton Wong was surprisingly outperformed i mean he only played in 113 games and 109 of those he started but he hit 295 had a war of 4.5 and was not a gold glove unfortunately well we don't know yet uh the rest of our lineup though really up for grabs we had orlando arcia hit eighth and he hit 263 played in 124 games uh in real life i think the, the brewers actually traded arcia but we still got him. I might maybe look to move him, depending on... But I, he's been a solid shortstop, though, and he's a decent defender, so I don't think I'm going to move him for the time being. But I really do think this season was led by our pitching, and you can see by just by the rankings. I mean, we were first in four different pitching categories and second in runs against. That's pretty insane. I didn't expect that. Our bullpen was surprisingly well. Third in ERA. First and fit, first in pitcher's war, and first in strikeouts, which is really crazy. Corbin Burns struck out 227 guys, Woodruff striking out 207, and even Freddie Peralta striking out 187. And he only started, I mean, he played, okay, he started 21 games, but he was really good. Wow. Uh, how long do we have him? He signed for quite some time, too, through 2026. So that's good. I think most of our pitching stuff is signed through... Actually, no. Corbin Burns is on arbitration, though, so we'll be able to lock him up for a while. A few more years of team control. Woodruff, I think, is also in the same spot. Yes. And he was actually an All-Star in 2019. Not an All-Star this year. But wow, yeah, I mean, our, our whole pitcher staff... 
really well. Adrian Hauser to seven and two to two thirty three ERA before he got injured, and I don't think we'll have him for the playoffs. Then he'll be out along with Eric Yardley, who actually both of these guys were phenomenal. So we're gonna let we're gonna have Michael Kopech and Drew Rasmussen in the bottom half, and even they had an ERA under four. So our yeah, this team is being absolutely carried by our pitching staff right now. But we'll see how far we can go. I really didn't expect this, at least for season one. I knew it was up in the air whether we can make a playoff push or not. We ended up securing that over the Cardinals by a game. And we're actually going to see who we play. So I'm going to go ahead and probably play these playoff games now. Because next episode we're going to do the offseason. And that's going to take a while. So Let's see how far we can go. And I want to see the playoff tree. All right, we play the Mets in the first round. Of best of five series. It'll be interesting. Game number one. And if you haven't seen me sim these games yet, what I plan on doing, actually, you'll just see. So game number one, we have Corbin Burns on the mound against Jacob deGrom, who had a stellar season. These games are going to be a little tougher. I don't know what to expect, but we're going to find out. Jacob deGrom taking on the Brew Crew. We go up 2-0 into the third into the fourth 2-1 Mets get on the board and they take the lead in the fifth DeGrom is 12 Ks through five Brewers can't score in the sixth or in the seventh or in the eighth and we lose 3-2 so Corbin Burns and the Brewers fall we only put together four hits two of those coming from Orlando Arcia so a disappointing game number one and we head to New York for game number two, Noah Syndergaard, and against Brandon Woodruff. See what we can do. It's going to come down to whether the offense can really get on a streak or not. And so far, it's looking <laughs> more likely than not. No hits into the sixth. Finally get on the board. Another amazing pitching performance, too. And finally, the Brewers get on the board in the seventh. Brandon Woodruff has been stellar, giving up one hit through seven, through eight. Hater's going to come on. Can he close it out? 3-0, and we finish with a 3-0 victory. Series tied at one. Finally playing some home games here. See if that helps the offense. We really just struggled to kick it in gear. Freddie Peralta is going to be on the mound, and he has been hot. Seven and three with an ERA under three. Taking on Carlos Carrasco, who has had quite the career. But this time in Milwaukee. We'll see what we can do. Freddy Peralta. Starting strong with two innings of shutout baseball. Make that three. Make that four. Finally, Mets get on the board in the fifth. Again, Brewers offense is nowhere to be seen. And I think that's going to cost us. It does 2-0. And these are the kind of frustrating games we have to deal with, I think, just at this point. Without the weapons on offense, it's, it's going to be tough. Again, this is all better than expectations, but Stroman and Kopik will be on for game number four. This is game number five. No, it's game number four. Down 2-1 in the series. See what we can do. Stroman Kopik. Let's get on the board first. Brewers actually tie it up and take a 3 1 lead. That's nice. That's what we like to see. Can we hold the lead into the eighth? Hater closes it out. Series tied at two. Wow, what an. It's going to come down to the final end. Here we go. We're playing in New York. Corbin Burns will be on the mound. Series tied at two. How far could we go? Playing Jacob DeGrom. Did we beat him? We didn't win. We lost game one by one. 
See if he can turn it around. Corbin Burns, Jacob DeGrom. We have a lead. And the Mets, quick to tie it up and actually take a 3-1 lead. 6-1 lead. Corbin Burns looks like he fell apart. 12-1. And the Brewers' postseason hopes are ended. As quick as they started. <laughs> so we lose the series 3-2. I'm not really disappointed. For season one, that's really better than I expected. I kind of knew going into the season that we didn't have an offense. Uh, it looks like Colton Wong wants to help the community. Let's give a donation. For that, always good. But, yeah, rather, di rather disappointing end of the season. Um, the Dodgers end up going on to win the World Series. And we are officially headed to the offseason. So, an exciting episode, an exciting end of the 2021 season. We fall short uh, in the playoffs, but I think overall the season went better than expected. We saw how strong our pitching staff was. Most of these guys are coming back next year. And we're going to review all this again in the offseason episode coming up. But I'm really excited. I think we can make some big moves and really position this team to have a further push deeper into the playoffs we have some key pieces that we can keep building around and i think even i mean adrian hauser could have added a, a really unique element to the squad if he was back but i think he signed through yeah uh, he uh, okay he signed through arbitration anyway so he has more team control but a very promising first season for this club and i'm looking forward to the offseason i hope you all enjoyed and i will see you next time